Hello, Amy. I wonder if we can start with you just telling us who you are and where you're from. Uh, my name's Amy Lassman, and I'm Deputy Head Teacher at Nelson Mandela School in Sparkbrook in Birmingham. And you are an improvement champion. Um, in which cluster? Um, our cluster is five schools locally, all around Sparkbrook area, all good or outstanding schools. And at phase? All primary schools. So tell us about what being an improvement champion means. Tell us about the process of involvement in peer review. Uh, well, to start with, the peer review is mainly conducted between the head teachers and the deputy head teachers of the group of schools. And the improvement champion's role comes after the review day has been done. So after they've had their review and they've come up with some areas for improvement and areas of really good practice to share, my role is just to go into the school and work with the whole group of head teachers to help them to fine tune those findings and to get lots of evidence of really good practice to share with other schools across the partnership and also to help that school to work out what their next steps are. Their next steps to improvement. Next steps to improvement. And how much time does this role take? Uh, well the workshops generally take an afternoon um, and then there's some follow-up work afterwards, just emailing or phoning the schools afterwards to see how it's gone. So it's not too time consuming at all. What um, made you take on this role? Um, well, I've been involved in a peer review at my own school and found it to be a really interesting and helpful experience for the school. So I wanted to be more involved in the peer review. Um, and I also wanted to be involved in a way that allowed me to see more of what's happening in other schools and to help them. And also for myself, professional development, it's, really, it's a really interesting role. You learn lots of new skills, develop yourself. It's been really rewarding so far for me. So tell us about those skills that you need then. Um, t the skills that you think you needed to start with and the skills that you've developed since you've taken on the role. Um, to start with, I thought the skills would be more school-based and education-based and I'd need to know about education and school improvement. But as I've done it, I've found more that the skills that you actually need are more about communication, working with other people, sort of coaching skills and helping um, facilitate the meeting. So often you're in a room with one of the reviews I'd workshops had is I think there were 10 senior managers there, all with different views of the school and their own schools and trying to share that information and making sure that that conversation kept on a meaningful track and stayed on track. So the skill there of managing a group of outspoken people with strong views <laughs> and opinions, um, so it's very important that you can manage the room and control the, the ebb and flow of conversation to make sure that it stays mm. fair. So that sounds like a really pretty challenging role, given that you're working with head teachers uh, often and you have to help them to get to a solution. What do you think have been the biggest challenges or obstacles? Um, I think the biggest challenge probably is just that, making sure that the time that you have for the workshop, which is quite limited, you manage the time well to make sure that you set a target at the beginning that everyone agrees with and then you make sure that you work effectively to get towards that target at the end because at the end of the workshop the school needs to leave with a clear view of what they're going to do next so managing that so I think um, the, that's the, the hardest part is fitting it into the time mm. um, uh, and so the developing those skills managing the time all the big challenges and a lot of learning for you. What or who has helped you take on this role and fulfil it? The initial training that I had here was really helpful, obviously. Um, and also having the support of my head teacher and the other head teachers in the cluster, they value the role. So when I go to the when I've gone to the two workshops, I've been made to feel very welcome and, and have an important role in it. Yes. So they've allowed me to lead the meeting close the meeting and run the whole meeting. So that's made it much easier. Yes. Um, so I've been very lucky in that respect. Okay. Um, and tell us about what you think this role can achieve. What is the potential of this role in the peer review process? I think the potential for it is huge. It's a really important part of the peer review process that at the end of that review day, everybody gets back to, to think about not just the school's next steps on their school improvement, but also picking out the really good practice and sharing it. So I think the potential for networking between the clusters 
is huge and brokering support across schools and then between clusters as well after that. So I think if, if we had more school improvement champions working and then meeting to share their experience, then that network would extend further so it'd be easier to broker the, the right support because within five schools there, is, there are lots of opportunities but if I met with another cluster with another five or six schools, we'd double that possibility. Mm. So I think there's huge potential for it. And why do you think it's better for people who are not head teachers to undertake the role than for head teachers to do it? Um, I think for two reasons. One is you have a slightly different view of the school. Um, you're less involved, maybe. Um, but also it's really good professional development for that person. So I think it's a training role. It's important that it's for people who aren't head teachers already. So what would you advise if somebody was thinking about taking on the role of improvement champion? What advice would you give them? Uh, to come to some training at BEP, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> and then to think about looking at um, things like coaching skills, to think about their time management and make sure they've got lots of ideas in their toolkit for the meeting so they can... Um, because when you first go to the meeting, you don't know because you haven't been on the review. You don't necessarily know what the issues are. So I've met with the head teachers before the review days, before the workshops, which has helped. But sometimes you might go to that meeting and not be aware of what's happened. So I think having a meeting with the head teacher beforehand, or at least sight of the report or the notes from the review day. And then to just think about having a really clear structure for the workshop, but also flexibility to be able to change it if it turns out that's not the best way. So tell us, finally, what have you enjoyed most in the role? Um, I've really enjoyed being in other schools and meeting lots of teams of um, professionals from other schools and finding out what the difficulties are that they're facing and just thinking through with them a sort of action plan for how they need to move forward um, and being involved in that, but having a slight... It's not like being involved in it in your own school. You've got a different view of it. So being able to sit back and watch other people work out problems... I've learnt lots of new ways of um, problem solving myself from that. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much, Amy. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you.